Hello everybody, I'm Luke Nello and you're watching Best Replays of the Week. We're still a bit behind as these replays are all from the weeks 18th to the 31st of October. In this week's episode, we'll see a KV3 stand guard like Gandalf the Grey, and some reminders on just how easily a victory can slip away. Let's get started! The defender is there to make sure the base doesn't fall into enemy hands. Do it well enough, and they may never even see the capture zone. Broex Jr. from the EU cluster drives his tough as nails KV3 at Erlenburg. The battle is an assault, and his team is defending the north side. The defenders fan out, getting ready to hold their ground. The KV3 isn't fast, but luckily it doesn't need to go far. A chaffy slips through the line, threatening the artillery. Broex Jr. turns around and heads back to base. The scout dies, but a decision has been made. Broex Jr. is going to stay and defend the circle, no matter what. It's a good thing too. Defense in the west has collapsed, and enemy tanks are streaming in. The defender picks his spot, angles his tank, and patiently waits. The Crusader is the first to go. The T-29 takes a shell to its side, but it's not enough to save the artillery. The T-34 charges in, oblivious to its own safety. Two shots take care of it, and incoming fire keeps hitting the sturdy building. Tank shells and an artillery strike are absorbed by the track, then a shot from the T-25-2 pings off the glacius. The KV-3 is at full health, and none shall pass this bridge. They are determined to try though. The TD charges in, backed up by a Tiger-1, and this is too much for even the KV-3's armor. Luckily, a friendly artillery unit is on the case. Another exchange of fire leaves the Tiger hurting, and the KV without a track. The side scraping is perfect, but the score is not looking too good. A well-timed attack takes care of the Tiger and reveals an SPG. The VK Heavy is a more urgent target though, so receives the next shell. An unseen enemy disables a track, and the SPG manages to escape. The KV-3 stays in the base, using the buildings for cover and looking for targets. The SU-100 is tougher than it looks and wins the exchange. Burroughs Jr. reloads, angles his approach and does it properly. This time, the SU-100 has no chance. Next target, an SU-100Y in the distance. The steady shot to its side takes away half its health. The KV-85 is spotted, but turning to deal with it may have been a mistake, as artillery gets in a free shot from behind. On the other hand, the rival KV bursts into flames. The fire nearly does the trick, but it takes one more shell to finish the job. The other KV-85 is seen as well, but as Broex Jr. turns to attack, his luck finally runs out. Two punishing hits hammer the KV-3 down to 15 HP. The damage turret is slow, so he turns the hole to bring the gun to bear. Boom! The game is 2 versus 2, and no enemies have made it to the circle. Turning the tank is taking forever, and the SU is coming to finish the job. The gun turns just in time, and one more enemy is gone. In the distance, the remaining ally finds the artillery, and the game is over. Victory! That was amazing! Nobody could cross the bridge and live. Ace tanker, steel wall, 8 kills, and now our Defender of the Week award. Congratulations! Our next submission is one of those hard to classify replays, which qualifies for several categories. However we look at it, Blessic definitely qualifies for a best replay, so crucial contribution it is. The standard battle is fought at Westfield, and Blessic is driving his Panzer 4H. The start is not terribly promising. The Panzer is sluggish on the slopes, and, well, it can't climb that, never mind. Onwards and forwards. Finally reaching a good position, Blessick draws a bead on his opposite number and let's fly. Boom! No more rival. The first shot at the nippy Panzer 1C misses, but when it reappears at close range, it's an easy kill. Two down. Taking fire but no damage, the Matilda is a tough customer, but the smaller Panzer is easy. Another HE shell, another kill. The Matilda makes things easier by showing its side, but it still soaks up shell after shell. Eventually an ally puts it out of its misery. Blessick climbs to the highland and is faced with a worrying sight. The entire northwestern side has collapsed, and the base is wide open. Allies are putting pressure on the enemy base, but somebody has to defend. The first artillery is taken down, and enemy armor is rolling towards the cap zone unopposed. Blessick looks for stranglers to ambush, and then fires a shot down into the valley. 
The game is two against five, and his only ally is a bottom tier. Now it's time to see what the 10.5 centimeter gun can do. 54 hit points? Really? Well, at least it reset the cap. The French TD is coming up to deal with him, but here the gun bites just fine. One shot is all it takes. 50% cap, and apparently the enemies know just where to aim. Two shots reset both cappers, but the damage isn't that heavy, and a Churchill is coming for him. One more hit, and then the Churchill one has to be dealt with. Both combatants miss, but the Churchill starts taking fire from across the valley and loses a track. The remaining ally is helping out. Free for a moment, Blessick swaps to heat ammunition and takes careful aim at the KV-1. That's more like it! Half its health vanishes in a flash. The VK-3601 gets a shot in, but the next heat round takes it out of the match. Now for the Churchill. A heat round should… but no! Once again the shell hits the dirt. A hasty reload, a nervous unaimed shot, and the Churchill explodes. Whew! A bit of luck there, even at this range. Another heat round at the KV, but this time it doesn't even scratch the enemy. The cap is reset though. Blessick swaps to the HE and starts to wear the KV down. It's going well, but suddenly the second premium Churchill opens up on him, sight unseen. That rapid fire gun can demolish the Panzer in short order. Three hits are taken, and the repair kit used up before the Panzer IV gets into cover. Blessick gets into position just in time to see the KV-1 finish off his ally. A few seconds later, his HE shell finally ends the capture for good. Sixth Sense lights up, and he backs off, hopefully away from the Churchill. Now what? 60 HP left, and who knows if the Churchill has been damaged at all? Blessick doesn't hesitate, and heads off along the northern road at best speed. Cap started. Did he guess the enemy's plan correctly? If the Churchill intended to capture, it's now too late for that. Can he get back in time? Blessick angles his hole, aims his gun, and waits for the enemy. But it's not necessary. The Churchill is too slow. Victory! Excellent game, Blessick! Ace Defender Invader Top Gun. Way to think on your feet and do what's needed at each stage. This is the essence of the Crucial Contribution Award. Let's move on to a pure invader game. It's important to recognize the right moment to head for the enemy base. Sparky One shows fine instincts for doing just that. The match is a tier 9 standard battle on highway, played on the EU cluster. Sparky is driving the Lorraine 40 ton autoloader, and he shows off the tank's engine power with a dash to the city. Look at it go! This looks like a practice tactic. He takes up an ambush spot and waits. It pays off. An IS-3 loses nearly 1000 HP and its panicky counter shot misses. Great start for the lorry. After the reload, a Yag Panther is pushing into the courtyard. Emptying the magazine leaves the TD dead and two heavy tanks damaged, but this time the Lorraine also takes a beating. Instead of waiting out the reload in safety, Sparky gets out of the courtyard and drives at the enemy before the magazine is ready. The overbold engagement doesn't go cleanly. The premium Jagdtiger puts several shots into his lorry, and Sparky only survives with the support of the FCM 50 ton. At least the IS-3 from earlier is finally dead. This is tricky though. The tank is helpless during the reload. It can't survive a hit, and the TD he killed early has blocked the escape. Sparky trusts the allies to keep the Jagdtiger busy and makes a break for it. This is a moment I spoke of earlier. The game is dead even at 8-8, and there's a small window of chance to go for the capture. With the speed shown at the start, the Lorraine flies over the map. Sparky swings around and approaches the base from behind. A second Jagdtiger 88 is guarding the base, but it's looking the wrong way and completely helpless. The Lorraine settles in the capture zone, and the crew can focus on the reload. A nearly dead T-28 prototype is spotted in the distance, but nothing can be done about it just yet. The T-28 becomes visible again as it kills an ally, and this time the weapon is hot. A single shot is all it takes. Sparky draws back for some cover, and the counter-capture starts. The allies are going back to defend, so the lorry is on its own. What's worse, an enemy M-12 SPG is coming to deny the camp. The lorry has a small edge, but it can't leave the cap to deal with the arty. Maybe he can. No, too risky. It's better to stay behind the barn. Actually best to withdraw as far as he can. The arty is making a play. It eats the Lorraine's first shot, fires and misses. Phew, it's victory now. Five more seconds and it's over. 
Now, that could have resulted in victory even without the capture, but Sparky's decision to cap and the way he went about it was just about perfect. Invader of the week, congratulations! Right, let's relax with a traditional Top Gun for a while. Tier 10 mayhem on mines with Xander T taking his Object 140 on a killing spree. The object leads the charge as the team takes possession of the central high ground. The first minutes are spent jockeying for position. Shots are fired, but nothing much happens, other than friendly tanks dying. With the score at 3-8, it's starting to look like it's now or never. The KV-4 takes a hit, and the AMX-5100 becomes the first kill of the match. Our Rambo contender is still cautious though, and backs off. Every ally on the hill is dead, and enemies are driving up to claim it. This is where Xander draws the line. The American autoloader can only scratch the object's paint, and it gets ruthlessly demolished. The Lovi has a nice gun, but it should know when it's outclassed. It doesn't take long to become the third kill, and the object is just warming up. A tortoise is tough as now, but not so much when it's showing it's behind. Fourth kill! And why not take out the T110 while you're here? That makes five. The VK is tougher, better do this right. Except Xander loses sight of the enemy for a moment, receives a shell, and his own shot fails to penetrate. Damn! Okay, better relocate. Among other things, the enemy team have a top tier artillery piece. Let's not take any chances. The object climbs down and goes hunting. The capture siren sounds briefly, but the enemies are out for blood, not capture points. Xander attempts to help his ally, but the TD is doomed. Also, he has his own problems with the heavy VK. Circling the building to gain an advantage, he gets proof that the enemy SVG is awake. The VK finally goes down to an auto-aim shot, but that fight costs a lot of hit points. Three enemies left. Xander moves forward just as the autoload artillery fires. The shell misses, but his track is cut by the Centurion. Yikes! That was lucky. The artillery is probably reloading, or he would have taken the shell there. Xander backs away, and before long the capture starts in earnest. The enemies are not taking any chances. They have artillery support, and they will force him to come for the cappers. Smart. Challenge accepted. The object takes the long way around, using any cover that can be found. Let them try and guess where he'll pounce from. The Waffentrager guesses wrong, and Xander gets a free shot in. The building provides cover, but not from the artillery. The TD dies, and the artillery misses again. Forward! Shots are traded. The artillery fires, and Xander goes for the ram. No! Let's see that again. The artillery is missed three times and will still have a shell. Xander has Amarak damage and can't risk another shot. A ram makes sense, but the enemy counter charges and the speed is just too high. It could have worked. Still, that was a spirited top gun once it got going. Eight kills, ace, and 111 base defense points, not to mention the Michael Bay ending. You can't win them all. And now, a double feature as Endymion and Silent Hunter 68 take their T-34 heavy tanks into battle on fjords. The heavy boys head south, getting down from the road for cover. Silent Hunter is in the lead as a chaffy races past, putting a single shell into Endymion's Amarak. Let's just see about that. Patient aim is rewarded as the return shot blows the pesky scout into shrapnel. Still, that's the repair kit gone right at the start. The enemy team's heavy hitters arrive, but their Tiger 2s seem to have split up. The brothers take some damage, while the opposing force is utterly demolished. That's five kills for the heavy boys, but their teammates seem to be struggling. The score stands at 6-11. The T-34s turn around to deal with the next wave of enemies. The KV-2 aims slowly and dies without getting it shot off. Sixth kill for the platoon. Silent Hunter finishes off the ISU-152, making it seven. Teamwood takes care of the remaining Tiger-2, but Silent Hunter is running low on hit points. Endymion drives forward to take the hits, while close by the friendly Bulldog falls in battle. What's worse, the friendly base is getting captured, fast. The T-44 goes down, bringing the kill count to nine. The enemies who killed the Bulldog appear behind the duo and it's time to fight or die. The capture will have to wait. Silent Hunter takes out the artillery. 
The IS takes a beating, but Silent Hunter blows up, and the last ally dies from a shell belonging to the capturing Hellcat. Endymion is alone now against three enemies, and the cap is nearly done. A ram and shot combo finishes the IS off. But whoa! The capture bar disappears at 98%. Apparently, the Hellcat doesn't want to win by a capture. That may cost him dearly now. The T-25-2 fires and misses, as does our lonely hero. The next shots both hit, and it ends badly for the TD. It's one-on-one -on -one now, Hellcat. And there he is, with barely 100 hit points. We can only wonder what possessed the enemy as Endymion takes the match-ending shot. Victory! The brothers-in-arms racked up 13 kills and displayed beautiful teamwork throughout the match. The enemies would still have won if they hadn't gotten greedy. There's a lesson for us all in there. That's it for today's show. Keep sending in those replays. Remember that we're selecting the replays constantly in two-week blocks and are fully caught up there. I'm Luke Nella. Thanks for watching.